I can't believe this car weighs 5,700 pounds. I can't believe that because first, that's a thousand pounds more than the S580, which also has a four liter twin turbo. <laughs> and I also can't believe that something so heavy is this agile and this fun. How did AMG turn the Mercedes flagship sedan into a car that has F1 technology, two transmissions, and more torque than two Range Rover Sports? It's complicated, literally. If you park this striking sedan next to a normal S-Class, the differences are subtle. The slats in the grill are now vertical, there's larger air intakes, and instead of the three-pointed star emblem, there's a very aerodynamic AMG badge. But under the skin is a different story. Put simply, this is the most powerful S-Class of all time. Under the hood is a four liter twin turbo V8 that is as common in fast modern Mercedes as a divorcee. It makes 603 horsepower and 664 pound-feet of torque, which is weird because that's what it made in 2021. That's because the big news is the motor. No, not this one. This one, yeah. Underneath this floor is a 188 horsepower synchronous electric motor. It's powered by a 13.1 kilowatt hour battery pack that sits just on top of the rear axle. The system does reduce trunk space a little bit. You can tell this floor is a little bit high, but with 1,055 pound feet of torque combined between the engine and the motor, you can just drag your walk-in closet behind you. The electric motor makes 94 horsepower continuously or the full 188 for up to 10 seconds and it is integrated with the electronic differential to maximize precise power delivery. Power is fed to a two-speed transmission that shifts at 87 miles per hour, optimizing the e-motor for quick acceleration at both low and high speeds. But what it really helps with is this. Whoa. Folks, today's video is brought to you by my favorite product we've ever advertised on this show, the Mova Globe. People go nuts for these things. We've got them out in the hallway, and whenever I'm giving a tour of WCCS, people stop and they stare and they just can't believe it. These are globes, and as you can see, they spin, but there's no batteries, there's no cables, there's no anything. They're powered by light, not just sunlight, all light and they spin like this all the time forever they've got different sizes small medium and large and they've got ones that look like photorealistic versions of earth or other planets they've got ones that look like traditional classroom globes vintage maps also just kind of cool artsy rocks you name it it's over there on the mova globes website and if you hit the link in the video description today smoking tire fans get 10 percent off your order with that link shout out to mova globe for sponsoring today's video. Check them out, get one for a loved one or a friend, or put one in your office or your home. They are the coolest. Zero to 60, 3.2 seconds. At 87 miles per hour, the two-speed transmission in the electric motor upshifts. That way you get huge acceleration off the line and continued acceleration beyond 90 miles per hour. Top speed is 155 miles per hour, definitely electronically limited, definitely. The sound it makes is so interesting. Some of it's through a speaker, but some of it's from the exhaust. It's, it's loud and it's, it's also very like almost futuristic sounding. You don't hear the electric motor at all. All you feel is unceasing, endless thrust. Wow. 3.2 is very quick. Are there other silver spoons that are just as fast? Sure. The Panamera E-Hybrid is dead even with this car. Uh, things like the Bentega, the NSX, uh, an Urus are all a little bit faster to 60. But the S-Class has never been about winning drag races. It's been about comfort and composure. The fact that it is this quick is just a wonderful byproduct of the technology they are putting into this car. Owners of this car don't drag race from light to light. They buy the real estate between the lights. The power number for this car is absolutely insane. 791 horsepower, 1,055 pound-feet of torque. A thousand. I mean, just, are you, are you repoing yachts with this thing? 
Holy moly, it's 5,700 pounds. That is 1,000 pounds more than the S580, which also has a twin turbo four liter V8 in the front of it. The battery pack in this thing is called the HPB150, and that's because it weighs 150 kilograms. So there's 650 pounds of electric motor, transmission, wiring, all wheel drive system. This does do a good job of making a 5,700 pound vehicle feel like it weighs, well, significantly less. And this is a big, long sedan. Fish out of water, but modern technology. <laughs> it's impressive stuff. Impressive stuff. Woo! Some of this magical handling is thanks to AMG's Ride Control Plus with adaptive damping, which comes standard. The shocks constantly adjust both rebound and compression depending on conditions and driving modes. AMG also stiffened the unibody by adding aluminum reinforcements at the front and rear, as well as braces at the suspension mounts. AMG software controls the damper, it controls the uh, air spring, but I don't know that it has air suspension and that's great. I've driven some cars where it's changing the pressure of each corner as you're cornering and you can kind of feel it moving itself around. The RSQ8 did this and it just felt weird. Uh, whereas something like the Cayenne Turbo GT does a great job. It just feels like a really, really good um, coilover spring. This is just as good. I can feel the rear end trying to break loose when I apply a little throttle on the corner exit and the whole thing is managed really incredibly. I mean, think about what's going on back there. We have an electric motor that makes 188 horsepower. It has a two-speed transmission of its own and there's an electronic limited slip differential and this thing has all-wheel drive. All of that is working together to try to keep you alive. The nine speed automatic transmission doesn't shift that quickly. When I was in the turns earlier and trying to shift up and down a lot, it was, it was seconds behind. I, I, I wanted a dual clutch so badly for that kind of driving. Most owners won't care, but when this is in full acceleration mode, wow, you could almost, it, it, it almost feels like a single speed gearbox. There are seven different drive modes in this car. Snow, individual, battery hold, electric, comfort, sport, and sport plus. I love the battery hold setting. I like being able to do that. I know it's beneficial for people that live outside London and they need to drive into a city where they're gonna tax them if they use gasoline. But I just like being able to choose when I'm using my battery and when I'm not, especially for filming. I wanted to show you folks the electric only mode. So I wanted to save the battery during the commute up to the canyons. To get to electric only mode is very simple. You can either turn this knob here, which is your drive selector setting wheel, or you can tap the appropriate function here on the tablet. And you will get about 33 kilometers or 20 miles of electric only range if you drive carefully. You can adjust the regen using this little click wheel thing here. One pedal driving is possible. There's a few ways to recharge the battery and a Mercedes engineer explained them to me at lunch and it is not what I was expecting. The first one, you can plug it in, of course. That is how you can get the battery to 100% or 99%. However, you can never get the battery really fully charged while driving the car unless it's some extreme circumstance. If you drive the car in comfort mode for a long time on a flat road, it will keep the battery at about 25%. They think that's what you need you know, to make passes and such. If you put it in Sport or Sport Plus, it charges it more aggressively using the engine, but it will only charge it to 50%. They said it won't go beyond that because they don't think you need more power than that. That is plenty of power in this battery pack to give you all the boost you could need for acceleration, passing, etc., etc. However, if the downhill was long enough and you used regen the whole way, you could theoretically charge it to about 70%, but you would need a mountain. One interesting thing about electric only mode is that you can get all wheel drive from it. Now, remember, the electric motor is mounted to the rear axle, but what it does is it actually sends torque up the all-wheel drive formatic system to the front wheels. So 
where a normal 4MATIC uses the engine and then sends that power through drive shafts and clutch packs to both axles. This actually does it in reverse. It's like a rear-engined all-wheel drive Mercedes. S-Classes are expensive, should look expensive, and should feel expensive. And I think a lot of the interior delivers on that. This carbon fiber dashboard is beautiful. I mean, carbon fiber to me is, is kind of played out, but this is an excellent execution of it. I like the new vertical vents here on either side, and this just open area looks so nice. The dashboard is so deep. This car is gigantic, of course, but they do a really good job putting a lot of sparkly things in it. You know, this is like a Christmas tree. You get in here and you go, ooh, shiny, expensive. There are so many screens in this car. One, two, three, four, plus one in the back that you can use to control all the things, which we'll get to. Everything is multifunction. There's like seven different gauge displays I can choose from. These little screens, one is a knob you can twist or press. The other one has two different areas you can press on and some little switches next to it. This helps you change your exhaust, your dynamic mode, your shock setting, uh, your transmission setting, everything. Capacitive buttons, they're all over the wheel. They they require specific touch to work, which is great. You don't get this kind of accidental button pushing that you had on some of the earlier cars. Um, so that's good. You can also just slide your fingers across various things in addition to pressing them. And of course, there's the tablet. The tablet that could fit hundreds of commandments, not just 10. The tablet controls everything from dy dynamic settings, uh, chassis settings, track pace, to your phone, massages, lighting, Everything can be controlled within this tablet. There are some shortcut buttons. Thankfully, you hit the AMG button over here. It brings you to your modes, um, parking cameras, charging stuff, vehicle settings. That's where the heads up display is hidden, which I turned off. It's very clear, but it's very bright. And for me, it's oriented too high on the windshield. It was actually like overlaid on top of the cars in front of me. I didn't really like it. But the S-Class experience isn't just limited to the front seats. The S-Class has always been interesting in its ability to straddle the line between limousine livery car and driver's GT sedan. From the driver's seat, you command one of the more comfortable, fast, smooth, and capable cars ever made. But it's also perfectly natural to be driven around in this car. If you see someone in the back of an S-Class, you don't think, oh, they couldn't quite afford a Rolls Royce, or why aren't they in a town car or in the back of a limousine? Limousines are basically dead. Whether you are sitting in the front or the back of an S-Class, you are telling people that you made it. I have definitely made it for the next two hours until I have to return this thing. So many things can be commanded from this passenger tablet back here. For instance, when I first got in this car in the back seat, it was a little too bright for me. I couldn't film this tablet. There's a lot of glare uh, on the screen. So I tapped a few functions rather, and I closed both of the sunroofs. I can also close the rear window shade, the side window shades very quickly. And if there's no one sitting in front of me or it's not someone I like, I can hit a button and turn this into sort of a bed. For the next hour, I would like to pretend to be rich and get a massage. <sighs> How do I turn my toenail collection into a museum so I can write it off for taxes? Then there's the rear steer, which adds up to two and a half degrees of angle, but it's really noticeable. The grip from these PS4s is very good, but the steering is a little weird. The steering rack speed is quick, but the rear steer is not as invisible as I would like, and Bentley and Porsche both do it better. It's almost like there's a, a shelf where you turn the wheel beyond 11 degrees and suddenly it adds two degrees of rear steer immediately. The turn-in really changes quickly and it's just a little bit weird. Again, how many S-Class owners will care? Almost none, but the fact is that the competition does do this a little bit better. Another thing it doesn't do perfectly is the transition from electric only mode to hybrid mode. So right now I'm in comfort mode the, um, the engine is off, I have a hill coming up, I'm gonna floor it. Now the engine's on, and then it puts it into gear. So there was a delay from the time I pressed full throttle to when the engine kicked on, and then another delay from engine on to shifting to accelerating. Both Porsche and Ferrari do that better. Their engines go from off to on to pushing you forward quicker, and you don't feel it as much. All that handling performance does come at a price. For example, here in town, I'm in EV mode to make sure the car is as quiet as possible, but 
Can you hear all that? I mean, this is concrete, fairly level, just very small cracks between the concrete. But even with that, I'm still hearing and feeling a lot of these bumps in this car. And I'm kind of surprised. It's an S-Class. This has the 21 inch wheels, so I would opt for the 20s if you live in an area that has normal streets, really. But what this highlights for me is that this is a performance car first, luxury car second. Whereas I think the S-Class, the original one, or the regular S580 is the reverse. There's also little creaks happening in this car. Some of it's in the back seat when I go over bumps. Some of it's in the trunk when I drove over a manhole cover. I'm just surprised. This is a brand new S-Class with, I don't know, a few hundred, maybe a thousand miles on it. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting serenity. But like a Cayenne Turbo GT or an Urus, if you want a spacious car that doesn't get squeamish in the corners, the S63 delivers. The forward acceleration is incredible. As far as I'm concerned, the only competition in this space is the Panamera SE Hybrid or a full EV. The Panamera would be my choice if I was going for a performance luxury hybrid. All the inputs are as good as they can get. The steering, I've never had a complaint about it. The braking's really good. It just handles corners really flatly. It feels, it feels natural doing that kind of stuff. It feels like it's at home. The EV competition are cars like the Lucid or uh, Taycan or a Tesla. They're all gonna have way more horsepower, but of course you have to charge them. They don't have the versatility this does. And they also don't make the sound. <laughs> V8 growl followed by wastegates. Love it. How do you not? Cars have never been faster, but the bar of performance has never been more difficult to reach. Bigger wheels, stiffer rides, all of these are necessary in order to keep up. We expect a new car to be objectively better than its predecessor in every way, even if it is subjectively worse. The S63's astounding abilities come at a price. If you want a fast isolation chamber, there are gentler, better options. But if you know what you're getting into, this double XL size sports car is a remarkable machine. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.